if you are working with react then you must have seen these kind of syntax for an example react.fragment react.strict mode or if you are using any context api then context.provider or if you are familiar with react bootstrap there also you we have similar kind of syntax like card and their respective classes image body footer these all are the components so here now the question is can you create a similar kind of structure with custom component hello everyone welcome back to my channel i am nisha singla and in this session we are going to see one more way of exporting a component and that is in this format so let's see how we can use so for today's session i am using online editor and this is the default component and i just have one heading so just assume that my application is very big and I handle lots of features over there. For an example, we are handling some social media components. So now let's assume we are handling Instagram and we are handling Facebook portal. Okay. And over there in both portals, we have post option, we have reels option, right? So what I'm going to do and these both platform have their own UI to display the post and reel, right? So I'm creating one folder, maybe with the name of Instagram. And the another folder is FB that is for Facebook. Okay. And they both will have its own components inside it. As of now, it's just a folder. In the FB folder, I will create two components. So let's create maybe with the post that is post component and here one more with reels component. And similar for IG, I will have two component posts and reels. Let's quickly create these components. And just for the difference, I am just putting it here. FB post will load here. Okay. So this component is done. I'll copy this one and paste in the reels folder and just replace post with reels. And similarly, I want post for Instagram as well. Just change to IG here and same goes for reels. Nothing fancy, it's very simple, just we want to understand the structure. Okay, these things are done. Now let's come to app.js file and suppose here I have two categories, one I want to load the portal for Instagram and I have one more heading for Facebook portal. So let's assume I just want to load initially all the posts from Instagram and from Facebook. So I need to import the components, right? So I will say post, post from FB and import post from IG. So now we come into the situation, see we get an error like post is already been declared here. So we cannot export either we have to rename it, but we cannot use it straight away. So this is the problem that mostly happen when your project grow or you use lot of external packages, external libraries because you don't know what name was there. So to avoid this confusion, we always work with encapsulation, right? We have object oriented syntax where we encapsulate our feature into some classes and then we export it based on that class. Ideally, this post belongs to FB. So I should have some parent class that will say FB.post and Instagram.post so that I can differentiate from which container it is coming. So that's where that syntax come into the picture and it's very simple. Ideally, we just need to create one parent component and then all these will act like a child component that I have to export as an object from my parent component so that it gives a good encapsulation for my components. And the conflict that we are getting because of same name that will also not come. Let's check it for the Facebook first. I'll create one component here with the name of maybe FB timeline in the Facebook folder. So now here, this will act like a object for me, right? So let's create one object with the name of every timeline. And instead of returning a JSX, it's not a component. Ideally, I will say it's an object that is returning my other component. So what I can do, I can say something like this. So in this every timeline, I have post and reel. So I need to first import those component here. So I need to say post 
and same I need to import for reels. So now from here I can return post and reels and you are good to go. You just need to export this one at the end so that I can import it in the app component. And now in the app component, instead of importing it like this, I just need to import one component that is my FB timeline. Once I will do this, what you can do? You can simply say FB timeline dot either you want to import post or read. So I want to see post and see FB post will load here. And similarly, at any time, if you want to load reels, you just need to say reels. You can see it's very clean. And you check, you use two components, but there is only one import for the same. And same rule will go for Instagram as well. I need to create one file here. And that will be my IG timeline. So now in a same manner, I need to create one object here for IG timeline. And from here, I'm going to return my components that belongs to Instagram. Okay, but at the end, let's export it first. And let me import post and reel for Instagram. So here I need to say import post from and say import reels. And now from here in the same manner, I just need to return post and reels. So when you go to app.js file, I just need to import this parent component for Instagram. So now if I want to load Instagram post, so I need to say IG timeline post. And you can see here, right, it's working fine. And same thing you can do for Reels as well. So can you see the difference? It, it's much cleaner now, right? It gave a very good encapsulation to your components. And this is very handy whenever you are working on a very big project where you have so many features in the project so that you can encapsulate each feature in this manner. So you can see. We have minimum imports here and in a very organized way we are using the features and this kind of functionality you will see a lot when we work with some libraries as I told you earlier. So in a similar manner you can also create this kind of structure in your projects to give a good encapsulation to your features. Now the next question might rise how to pass the data as it is a component right we might have to pass some data. So to pass the data the logic will remain same from here I am calling the component. So for an example for the Instagram. I want to pass some prop, maybe a title or here I am saying no post maybe, okay. So this title prop you just need to read from your post of Instagram. So here you need to say title prop I am reading and you can display that. So that logic will remain same how to pass the data, no change in that format. So I hope you found this way of using component as well and it is very very handy in the projects. So just try to find out in your project where you can use similar kind of structure and let me show in the comment section how you found this video. So this is all about today's session. I hope you liked it. We'll see you in the next video with more interesting topic till then keep learning.